Welcome to Your Wings Day Show. I am Lumi. Cheryl. <laughs> I'm going to miss that. Hello. hello. Yes. <laughs> Your last week, like I had Aslam for three I hours. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> yeah, it was bad. But <laughs> okay, it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. It was okay. <laughs> yeah, I needed to drink water in between <laughs> just to keep up and to, you know, but yeah, it was fine. So what are we doing for the grade 10 today? Um, we are looking at the different types of skeletal systems that we're going to get in the animal kingdom. Okay. <laughs> In my language and yours, we are doing types of skeletons. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope you guys are excited for the show. Just a reminder how to get a hold of us, facebook.com forward slash learn extra is our Facebook page. At learn extra is where you can get us on Twitter. And then you can download all the show notes, the videos and the schedules on learn.mindset.co.za. And if you want to win yourself this awesome, awesome, awesome calculator, all you need to do is complete the test yourself section from the notes and then you complete the entry form, fill in all your details, then you'll stand a chance to win this awesome calculator. Remember guys, entries do close on Friday at 12 noon, so you have all the time in the world to do everything you want to do, then just before Friday, quickly enter the competition and you might stand a chance to win this awesome calculator. Quick shout out goes out to my cousin Sandy in East London and all your friends and everyone who you tell that I'm your cousin, they don't believe you, so now you wanted evidence and proof. Yes, I'm her cousin and shout out to you. So I won't waste any more time. I'll turn it straight back to Sharon. <laughs> Thank you. Well, congratulations. Yes, last week we did give it a <laughs> bit of a skip. Uh, <laughs> school activities are an industry at school for a very important open day. Welcome. We are now starting last week, I think with Aslam, you would have done the transport of water for us through a plant. So if we quickly have to recap, we started off very important. You're going to see now how important our mammalian tissues are, okay, and our plant tissues. So when we discussed, you discussed with me, all right, plant tissues, and then we looked at all the organs of the plant, and then we showed you how those tissues help support the plant and how those tissues help transport water through the plant. So we finished with the plant, and now we're going to start with our animal kingdom, all right? So we're going to do the same thing. So we're starting off the day with support systems, all right, in animals, support structures. And in simple terms, that's basically going to be the skeleton. Today, we're just going to look at the different types of skeletal systems that we are going to find. So we're just going to recap. You'll also see I'm going to bring in... Um, for starters, you're going to hear words like evolution, evolutionary trends, um, a few things that you might not be familiar with, but I'm just going to start to plant the seeds because at the end of the year, we are going to do, all right, um, the history of life on earth, when these things are going to come in, all right, but we're just going to give you a little bit of a, a little bit of background so you can see when we're looking at today at the different skeletal systems where it comes from if we look at it from an evolutionary aspect. Okay, all right, so first of all, before I forget, which I always do do, right, we're going to look at the challenge question. If, again, you know me in the multiple choice, but I do try to make it a little bit tricky. Already now, just from looking at here, you're going to see, all right, the terminology, the different kinds of skeletons that we're going to find. Read the, the question very carefully. Okay, let's get our pen going. All right. It says exoskeletons differ, right? And that's the most important part here. Exoskeletons differ from endoskeletons in, all right? Their chemical composition, their ability to grow along with the organism, they function as a framework for muscle attachment, both A and B, okay? So if we have a look at our words, right, we're starting already to discuss the different types of skeletal systems that we are going to find. Okay, let's start off with that first diagram that I think you, you are probably going to be unfamiliar with. All right, but let me show you. When we look at, let me see if I can extend the page there. What we are looking at in the later, the last part of your section, all right, you are going to look at a section called the history of life on earth, all right? So what we're basically looking at here, this is what we call a geological time scale. In other words, if I have to look here, it's basically a timeline, and you will learn that the earth is approximately six and a half billion years old, all right? And what that means is, if we look over here, it gives us a time scale, 
And what it shows us, don't worry too much about all these different names and everything, but what it does is shows us when certain, all right, organisms, certain animals, yes, plants are in here as well, but we're going to concentrate obviously for now on the animals, when certain animals started to appear and when they started to disappear, okay? If we look right here, this is the oldest. If we have a look at the bottom, I'm going to look here over here. These, this error over here, all right, <coughs> in Cambrian, this is the oldest. All right, so these are the oldest, the oldest. Uh, I'm not going to say living because they're not. When we look at the history of life, all right, we realize that when we look at fossil evidence and those kind of things, again, things we're going to look at later we're going to find that certain organisms, all right, when we look at the evidence, we see that certain organisms we don't find today, but we find traces of them, all right, in fossils, etc. And from that, we can, we can almost, the word is inference, infer certain things about the animals of that time. Now, what I'm trying to get at in a very long-winded way, it seems, all right, is if we have a look over here, we're going to find, I think there we go, right? So I just put a line through it. We're going to find the word skeletal. So in the beginning, now what you're going to notice is a skeleton, a skeletal system is anything, right, that will support, protect, and help with the movement of an organism, okay? All multicellular organisms have some kind of skeleton, Okay, so what do we need? We need something to protect. We need something to support because the more cells I have, the more shape I'm going to have, and I need that shape to be supported. Otherwise, it would just be a blob of jelly, just all creeping around the ground, and it's not, not going to be very attractive. Okay, so we need to have that support system. That is going to be your skeletal system. What we notice when we look at the time scale, evolution uh, from time, we notice that in the beginning, right, the organisms, the very first organisms that we saw lived in water, right? And that water itself is going to provide a support system for those organisms, okay? So now in water, the water helps you guys, those of you who I'm sure you've all gone for a swim or whatever, water supports. You can float in the pool, you can run, you can jump, you always feel so more energetic because water is there to help support you. Okay, but as we can see, right, if we follow certain trends, we're going to see that organisms developed on land as well. So from the water to the land. Now that we are on land, we have a few problems. One, there's no water to support us. So we have to have different support systems. Number two, right, we have this problem called desiccation, drying out. I'm on land now, right, not in water. Because there's no water, I need to overcome. I need something. I need to stop drying out because my body needs water. All my cells wa need water, and I can't use this water. So I need to have this <coughs> framework, this protection, where it stops me from losing water, okay? And also when we got onto land, the animals started, well, we don't use animals, the organisms started to get bigger. And with an increase in size, right, become a greater need for these support systems. Okay, so that's just looking at basically from an evolutionary point of view. Okay, now let's have a look at the three different types of skeletons that we're going to look at. All right, number one, and the word, all right, the type of skeleton, the word, right, gives you a, a clue, an idea to what the kind of skele the skeletal system is about. Okay, our first one is hydrostatic, all right? Hydro is obviously going to mean water. So when we come to these organisms, right? They are reliant on water for their support, so they either need to live in water, right, or they need to live very close or in a moist environment so that they can retain the water. 
they can't live in very dry areas. Okay, so let's have a look. When you do this, you need to know, you'll see I've put it in table form in the notes as well. A description, so what each, all right, what each skeleton looks like. Okay, examples, you need to be able to give examples of different kinds of animals that have that kind of skeleton. And then very important, each skeleton has advantages, all right, what makes that skeleton better, but on the other hand, it also has disadvantages. What makes that skele skeletal system, all right, what makes it not as easy or target, um, a target for other organisms. Okay, let's start with a hydrostatic skeleton. Let's look at the pictures first. I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom. Oopsie. All right. If we have a look at the pictures, we will note this already, what kind. When we talk about a hydrostatic skeleton, it's soft. Water is going to be the support system. So these these organisms are soft and squishy. That's the only words I can use, all right? This here you would recognize as a jellyfish. Okay, have a look here. You can't see any kind of bones or hard substances, all right? All these tissues inside here, all right, are going to be filled. They're all filled with water. There's a water, it lives in water, all right? And if you look at all these structures, they're pretty small. They're not very large, all right? Might quite small because that's one limiting factor. Water is the, all right, the main concept that's going to keep them, that give them support. Also, if you will notice, they don't have too many internal organs. So protection is not because they don't have, all right, as many um, complex internal organs, they don't need to be protected as much, okay? So here I have a jellyfish. Here it's not the fish. I put Nemo in there because that is a sea anemone. All right? I think I spelled it wrong. It looks like, oh, there we go. Oh, me and my dots. Okay, all right. It looks like a, it looks like a, looks like a, a almost like a plant-like thing, but it's not. The sea anemone is a animal, all right? It's a basic animal. It's what we call the filter feeder, and water just flows in, and it gets all its food, and it flows out, all right? But it does obviously need to have a support system. Okay, the one that doesn't live in water but does need a very dry, in fact, is here, okay? Oh, I could get rid of that. I'm sure you all recognize that, all right? As a little boy or whatever, I'm sure you've all got digging for worms. Is your ver is your common earthworm, all right? Is your earthworm? I'm sure those of you who, by mistake, squished it or whatever, it's going to be very very squishy, all right? If you've gone fishing and you've used it, okay. So if we look at all three of them, they all reliant on water in one way or another. Let's have a look at the description. All right, okay. When we look at the description, again, what we said, it's soft, it's got a jelly-filled cavity, right? Jelly is not a hard substance, right? So because of that, we're going to have very few organs that we need to protect, okay? Now, when we, again, when we're starting to look at, animals need to move, all right? Animals need to move. And in order for them to do that, muscles need to do the work. Now, here, when it comes to, all right, muscles usually need to be attached to something that's hard, right? They need to, in the insertion where they join, right, the attachment is usually much better if it's to a hard surface. So here we have a bit of a problem because we don't have anything solid to attach it to, all right? So you'll find that they almost move, they still move. One of the characteristics of the animal kingdom is movement, right? But here you're going to find that they are not overly active. Movement is quite limited, and how it moves is muscle. There is muscle, right? But it's just going to be in little segments. So certain muscles, right, can work at each time. None of the muscles, right, can be attached to any hard surface because there isn't any, okay? So there we say cushions the internal organs from shock. 
Yes, they do things. It's like a pregnant woman. All right, they have all that amniotic fluid inside. That's what the fluid does. It's a shock absorber. Remember, they still need to have protection. Okay, examples I've shown you, all right, the different kinds of examples. What are the advantages? The advantages are they are very simple, and that is an advantage. Because they are very simple, they don't need all these complex systems, as you're going to see. They don't have a gaseous exchange system. They don't have a, all right, all these different skeletal frameworks. It doesn't have a cardiovascular system. It doesn't have a respiratory system. So because of that, all right, things are kept simple. And that is an advantage to it, all right. doesn't have all of these complex things. It doesn't need them, all right. It doesn't need them. They are very simple organisms. But there are disadvantages. If we have a look at the disadvantages, as I said, they are small. We can't, they're not very large. Right but here, restricted to water. They have, remember, what is their skeleton? It's water. If they're not in water, they're going to dry out. Does not provide a large degree of protection? Yes, it's soft. Right? The harder the protection, the obviously, the harder the skeletal system the more protection it's going to offer. And here, there are no hard parts, right? So they are obviously more vulnerable. And the last one here, as I said to you, because they don't have that great degree of muscle movement, they don't have a lot of movement. Earthworms basically can just like, you know, cringe and whatnot. The sea anemones float, the jellyfish, yes, it swims, but it's a simple movement. It can't do anything fast, running, walking, turning or anything like that. Is ons reg? Is dit reg? Are you reg? Ja, I'm reg, ja. Then I can start the next <laughs> session for you. <laughs> okay, cool. Fine sessions, before you go, a quick shout out to Banya, Nangobi, Lemoya, Habo, and Gabriella, and then Nicolette and Chompo. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. But let's take a very quick break, and we'll see you now, now. Welcome back, Ryan Sessions, from that break. Just a quick reminder, guys, if we don't get to any of your questions when you ask questions right at the end of the show, we do have a Learn Extra Help Desk, and the Life Sciences Learn Extra Help Desk is proudly brought to you by Axel. So make sure, guys, you ask questions, then you send them to the Help Desk if we don't get to them on the live show. Are you clear now? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> You must back. know, I just what give you like, like funny mm. looks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, the, the next, yeah, so now you've like, I'm like, duh, duh. <laughs> we, we were talking about sweating, so now I'm all like, lost. Okay, we are looking at the next skeleton that we're looking at is our exoskeleton. All right, and now if we break down exo, whenever we talk about something exo, that means on the outside. And I'm sure you've already had a look at what kind of things, right? They, they are the things I'm going to be answering that kind of gross me out. I'm not an insect kind of person. Okay. If we have a look, I'm going to show you the pictures. If we have a look at the kinds, all right, of organisms that have a skeleton now on the outside, okay? It's not inside and it's not water. It's on the outside. So it's this covering. If, if you have a look at it, we're going to see as compared to the hydrostatic um, skeleton, it is going to provide us with more protection. Okay? If we have a look, you can see the exoskeleton can be in like a, there's a few varieties that you can get. Here's the good old garden snail, right? It's nice and soft. There's its exoskeleton, and we say it is calcareous, right? Which is calcium. Okay? Over there, the scale. This over here, if you had a look, this would also be the crab, all right? And if you have a look at the crab, the crab, unlike the snail, which has almost just got a house on the back, the whole of the crab is pretty much covered with that hard exoskeleton. Okay, here is an insect. And an insect, some people say chitinous, some people say chitinous, whatever floats your boat, so to speak. It is... It's, a, it's also quite hard, all right? And when you did biochemistry, you would have known that it's a polysaccharide, all right? A structural polysaccharide. So it's made up of a carbohydrate. 
okay? That's your chitinous or chitinous, whichever way you would prefer to say it, and that is your insect. Or it can be soft, but it's still quite hard. It sounds so stupid to say that, but it's leathery. That's the word that we use, leathery. Okay, these things I do not like at all. They terrify the day living daylights out of me, right? And those are going to be your spiders. Okay, now if we have a look, right, what do we notice? That we have the support structure that's on the outside, okay? What is good and what, is, what are the advantages and what are the disadvantages? Okay, the advantages are, let's have a look over here. If I look at my crab, I look at each of them, it's harder. So obviously, <coughs> you're going to have far more protection. Also, you will notice here with all my spiders, all my crabs, all right, and all my yucky insects, is that their, their legs, their limbs have joints. And because they have joints, it actually enables them to move much better. Now, with all these nice hard structures around it, okay, even here, even if it's leathery, it is quite tough. What we're going to find is we're going to find that we have this surface area that muscles can attach to. All right, so we have this much larger muscle support, which then makes us able to move a bit more. So let's have a look over here. If we look at the advantage, we said the strong outer shell, so we have much greater support. Large area for muscle attachment. We've also said it protects the internal organs. Right, now, also, remember, most of the organisms that we're looking at here, one of the things we said, when we move from water to land, we need to have a structure around us that keeps them from drying out. And that's exactly what it does, right? If we have a look at all of our organisms here, that exoskeleton, even for the yucky snail, right, that exoskeleton is hard around the body, all right? And it stops water from being lost. The word there, remember what I used earlier? Desiccation. Okay, so this hard outer structure actually can help prevent water loss because we're now on land and that is exactly what we want to do. But, all right, and I've said joints. Now, and that's why I've put this picture. Let me go up here for you. That's why I've put this picture over here. What it is is, this is a little grasshopper, a little locust. That's its skin, all right? It molts. Now, what happens is, for these organisms, all right, they've got this hard outer covering. So that hard outer covering actually limits their growth, all right? Because it doesn't actually grow with them, all right? Unlike our skeleton that we're going to look at just now, our skeleton inside us grows with us. This one can't grow with it, okay? So what do we have? We, some of them have to molt, all right? They have to molt. They have to shed their skin. Here is the, the old skin so that they are then able, all right? And here my earpiece is falling out once again. Hang on a second while I put it in, all right? And they now, this is the extra skin, and they, at that time, they don't have a very hard covering. It needs to get harder, okay? So can you see now? They are vulnerable, right? That's th this stage, they don't have that nice hard covering. They're not as protected as they should be. So at certain stages in their life cycle, they are vulnerable to predators, okay? So that's one of the things. Now, I haven't put a <coughs> picture up here, but I should have. If, I'm sure some of you have eaten a crab or eaten a snail, usually if we damage the, the, the skeleton, it's going to die, all right? Unfortunately, we've, it, that's one of the things. Because of that protection is gone, it's going to die. Now, when it comes to breathing, etc., now we have a problem, okay? If I have a look at this locust, all the things around here, the whole body, is covered in this hard layer, all right? Now, now it has to breathe. How does it get oxygen into the body and carbon dioxide out? How does it do it, all right? Now what you're going to find is now we have to have, remember in the beginning, very simple, and they were very simple, our jellyfish and our sea anemones. Here we're going to see 
much more complex internal organs. Why? Because it's easy. When you're in the water, oxygen diffuses in, carbon dioxide diffuses out. That's it. In and out. You don't need anything special. Here you can't do that. Because oxygen can't go through that heart shell, can't go through that liver, can't go through that calcareous shell. So now you have to have special organs. For those of you who get close up with the locust, right, <coughs> on its body you'll see it's actually got little holes like that. All right, spiracles. And those spiracles are almost like your trachea. They take air in and they're out, right, and it actually breathes. So with this, right, with this surrounding cover, we do need to have far more complex organs, right, in order to be able to do the work that it needs to do. Okay, last one. And I'm sure you know that you are part of the last one. Endo means inside. All right, endo means inside. And basically, all vertebrates, all right, all vertebrates. You know, we're in the animal kingdom. You have two branches. You have your invertebrates, which most of them that we just looked now, all right, are hydrostatic and our exo, all our vertebrates. Our vertebrates are our fish, our frog. I'm sure you've all done this. So our reptiles, all right, our birds and our mammals. Those are our vertebrates, all right? All of those have an internal skeleton inside. There we go, all right? Found a picture of a fish here, and then obviously it just took a few organisms here. There's a cow, there's a horse, there's a dog, there's us, and there's a rhino. All of our skeletal systems are inside our body, all right? Obviously, all hearts, we have looked at bone tissue when we did mammalian tissue, all right? Bone, most skeletons are bone. Some fish can be cartilaginous, some fish can have a cartilaginous skeleton, but still the cartilage is hard, and what it does, it still has a protective and a supportive function. Okay? So if we have a look at our endo, we know that it's inside, and we know that it's made of bone or cartilage. Right. Advantages, as I said just now. When we grow, it's living tissue. All right? That's all the calcareous, all the ones, the leather, that was almost dead, if you could use that terminology, all right? So it's living tissue. It grows with us. We don't need to molt, all right? As we grow, so our skeleton is the cause of our growth. It grows with us. We now started to see these complex systems inside us. Heart, lungs, all right? The brain develops in the vertebrates. We're going to see much larger brain, a spinal cord, needed with the vertebra. So all these organs, right, now need to be protected. And they're protected from the inside, okay? So we have a much greater protection. Because we are more complex, we're going to do more things. What we're going to find here, all right, is again, all muscles attached to bone. So we're going to have a lot more movement, all right? And you will also find here that we have joints. And we're going to look at that, all right, in a week or two, that the bones of the skeleton, where they join, they, they, there is a joint. And that joint is able to move, all right? Certain of the joints, which we could call them synovial joints, they are able to move. And because they are able to move, that provides the body with a much greater ability to movement. Also, when the bones move, I don't know if you did it in technology, a lever system forms. And that lever, all right, your bone, acts as a lever together with the muscle to overcome, all right, any kind of weight, which is basically the bones itself, all right? So when we look at the endoskeleton, all right, you'll notice far greater protection because there is far greater complexity, far greater amount of movement. However, what we do have, our disadvantages, because I'm sure you would have noticed by now, all right, we are far more vulnerable because of the outside. Our outside is more exposed. We are far more vulnerable to heat and to cold, right? Like to controlling our body temperatures, etc., than insects and they do. Okay, so our three skeletons, hydrostatic, endo, and exo. 
Okay, look at a few. Let's start with a few questions. All right. Okay, it's not easy to find questions. All right, in this section, I had to be a little bit creative. All right, there must be a question for me out of you. Mm -hmm. It always happens like with these know. problems. My, <laughs> my question is here. All right. Question number 1.1 1 .1 is easy. All right. All it wants you to do is identify the different kinds of skeletons. So you have the choice of... Now, this is... I put this in here because this is a turtle. And the turtle actually has two. It's got a shell on the outside and it's part of the reptile. All right. So what does it have? It will have an internal as well. So both the turtle and its little cousin, the tortoise, all right, they can be an, have an exo and an endo. All right, here's my bird. Bird has an inside. Here's a bee. The bee is part of the insect. That will be on the outside, so it has an exoskeleton. My frog, right, has inside. It's part of my vertebrate, so that has an endo. All right, my crab, we know nice and hard. That has an exoskeleton. My jellyfish, all right, has a hydrostatic skeleton. And my pet dog over here has an endoskeleton. All right, all nice and easy. Now we get to the more difficult ones. Over here, this next question is asking you to compare. When you compare, the easiest way to do it, and much more marking friendlier way, and usually for your exams as well, when you get used to it for matric, when they ask you to compare, they are actually asking you to tabulate it. So get into the habit of tabulating. All right? So if I were to tabulate, what am I asked to do? I'm asked to compare the movement of the bee to that of the bird. All right? So this is what I do. Okay? I need to do the bee, and I need to do the bird. What am I actually asking? The bee is an exoskeleton, and my bird is an endoskeleton. That's what I'm asking. So here, I put another column here. I want number A. So now, how does the bee and the bird, how do they compare? What's their mode all right, of transport? So it's the, they're going to have the same, both of them. All right. Both of them fly. All right, the bird has a bit more. The bird can walk, all right, or it can hop. So there's a little bit more, all right, the method. Most, as I said, they have in common, they fly. Now number B. Okay, adaptation. How are their limbs adapted to their, all right, their mode? So here, what are we going to have over here for the bee? We're going to have wings. All right, what are they? They're light. Okay, where we go over here, our bird. We also have wings. But because of that, what we're going to find here, what happens here? Muscles. All right, in the endoskeleton, if we look at the bird, and you should know because you eat chicken mitten or Kentucky Fried Chicken, you are eating the bird's muscles. All right, that's what you're eating when you eat chicken. Okay. So when the muscle attachment, we're going to find here the wings, the ring, all right, of my, of my bee aren't, aren't made of muscle. Whereas my wings of my bird, because we need to think about this, okay? The wings of my bird, all right, attach muscle, all right, that are also attached to bone. But obviously, that we can do this now. Okay, adaptions of limbs. So it's light, right, and here we're going to see it needs to be quite strong. Also, if you think carefully, you will also know that the bones of birds are hollow. All right, and because they are hollow, that makes them much lighter, so they are able to fly. So you need to think for this kind of question. Question number C, types and attachments of muscles. Where will the muscles be attached here? The muscles are attached directly to the in the to the exoskeleton 
picture and here it would be a legacy one. All right. So if I were to draw a picture, there's your alpha, your muscles would all be directly all right, joined over here. Okay. Whereas if we look at the bird, all right, the bird, the muscles are attached to the bone. All right. And because of that, all right, we are then able to have much greater movement. Okay. Can I carry on? Can I carry on? You can. Mwah, mwah. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. I'm running out of uh, I need water. Okay, question number two. You'll see that <laughs> the questions here are pretty much repetitive because it's not a broad base <laughs> of which you can actually ask the questions on. Okay. So let's start. Are we going to start the new question or are we going to take a Do break? Do you want to take a break? Yes. Okay, cool. We'll Let's come back to the last okay. few questions. Okay, all right. Doing this. No, it's fine. It's fine. It's I'm, it's I'm it's waiting for James. It's, it's, it's your show and not. James is not talking, so, not you know, talking yeah. yeah. No, it's fine. James, James can you please talk to us? But anyway, my tit is <laughs> congratulations to Donald for winning this awesome, awesome Casio calculator. It will come to you in, in, in like the, not the near future, but soon, soon. <laughs> so congratulations to you, Donald. Yay, Donald and Gabinde. You have won yourself this awesome, awesome Casio calculator. And with that said, mindsetters, we are gonna take a break. James, please talk to us because we, we, oh, we just we all over you. the place. And mindsetters, we don't know who James is. James is in our ear. But with <laughs> that said, let's take a very quick break and we'll see you straight after this. Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> Just talking with Cheryl here, yeah. asking some stuff. So you want to take the questions now or ask the challenge questions? We can do the challenge questions first. First, yeah. okay, cool. We'll be then. changing our minds, we're women. Yeah, we are, we you know, are and today we just... <laughs> James is not here, please. I'm going to just do this for now. James doesn't want to speak to us, so we're just going to do our own thing for now. All right, okay. Let's see how if you got the challenge question right. Exoskeletons differ from endoskeletons. So what's the difference? Their chemical composition, endoskeleton, exo, all right, what do we have? We have chitin, we have leathery, and we have calcius. Endoskeleton, bone, and cartilage. So, yes, we are quite right. The ability to grow along with the organism, yes. Exoskeletons cannot endoskeletons can. Aha, so you already here we have proof checked, right, which automatically should we can then deduce. Number C, they function as a framework to muscle attachment. No, that is what they have in common. They don't differ there, they are together there. So your answer should be number D, both A and B. C. Uh, what? C, C, C. Do you read it? Okay, Cheryl, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> long, long <laughs> is that is that it? Yeah, I can go and ask me a few questions and then Kay. I'll go on to some more here. I'm guessing you just answered this, but I'll also ask it again. Paul Andler is asking, what is the difference between endoskeleton and exoskeleton? I'm having issues today. No, oh, don't try. It's yeah. fine. I'll What's the difference between endo and yes. endo? Yes. Endo means inside, right? Exo means outside. So endo, we are, our bones are inside our body. Exoskeleton, always think of the crab, all right? It's much easier to remember. It's nice and hard and crunchy. That's outside of the body. Everything is inside. Cool. And then Nicolette is asking, do gaseous exchange, does gaseous exchange take place in exoskeleton? Hey, gaseous exchange has to take place in all, all right? Gaseous exchange has to take place in all living organisms, okay? All living organisms need oxygen for cellular respiration, and they give off carbon dioxide. Okay, but when they we have an exoskeleton, all right, let me go back here. Oh, no, now I'm going, woo. Oh, no. Oh, we can look back. All right, <laughs> if, we <laughs> if we have a look, I'm going, as I drew over here, if we have a look at the insect, for example, spiders have inside over here, they've got special book lungs, all right? It, it sounds weird. It's almost like gills, but they're on the inside, all right? They have book lungs on the inside to be able for oxygen to come in. So all living organisms need oxygen, and they give off carbon dioxide. When I said when we have an exoskeleton, we have 
this hard substance. When we have our hydrostatic, imagine just your jellyfish, all right? It doesn't have any special organs. There's oxygen in the water. The wa oxygen goes in, carbon dioxide goes out. I'm sure we looked at the beginning of this year, the process of diffusion. Now we, oh, excuse me. Now think about crab, right? It's hard. Oxygen cannot diffuse in, right? Nor can carbon dioxide diffuse out. So what do I need? I need to have special organs. Here, let's go to the insects, as I said to you. The insects, right, have got these little holes on the side of their body, okay? And they almost, they're like our system. Air moves in here, and believe it or not, if you'll see, they've got little trap here, like little wind pipes, right, that takes the oxygen to their body. And they use it, right, and they release carbon dioxide, and you'll see what happens at the back, all the carbon dioxide comes out. Right, look, think of fish. Right, fish have special gills because they're in water, but they need it for gaseous exchange. Okay, and then Prince is asking Prince Siabi, what type of skeletons do snakes have? Do you know? Do you know? Inside you. Endoskeleton. <laughs> snakes are reptiles, and reptiles have an endoskeleton all right not a great great one right most of the sna snake is muscle right but they have an endoskeleton yes. cool and then Michelle Nola is asking do all insects fall under exoskeleton oh yeah that's a tricky one we're going to actually go and have a look but yes insects generally all have an exoskeleton I was saying to Lenny just now thinking oh no worms but worms are not insects all right if you have a look at invertebrates Ooh, let me extend the page. Okay, this is next year's syllabus, right? If you have a look at invertebrates, you've got your, I'm just going to go, there's your sponges, right? Then your platyhelaments, those are your tapeworms, all right? Then what do we see after that? Then we're going to go to your earthworms, your annelida, and then, voila, you have your insects, all right? And in your insects there, you have all of those. So, yes, your insects, that's where your exoskeleton would come in. Okay, yes. And then last question from Michelle Honolo. Um, he or she says, I can't see. Earthworm lives on mud. Does mud have oxygen? Yes. Okay. All right. Mud does have oxygen. All right. Remember, mud. What will there be in mud? There's water. There's sand. All right. M you'll, you'll see it, it, um, the mud is moist. All right. The mud is moist. And because that's moist, it's going to keep the, right, it's going to keep the earthworm. Mud has got very, very, very small when we did, you, when I think we're going to do sand at the end of the year, when we do sand. Mud is made up of very, very small particles. And because of it's those small particles, it keeps water, it re retains water much better. Okay? So that's why it's always going to be wet. So if you were an earthworm, which soil would you want to be in? Mud, because it's damp, because it keeps its water. And that is why. If the mud is damp, the water. And what are we going to find in ox water? Oxygen dissolves in water. Cool. Okay, and that oxygen will dissolve from the water into the earthworm. It, it diffuses, right, into the earthworm's skin. Are we, are we finished? Got enough questions? I think we can move again. I think I can find it. Yes, I can. <laughs> you always say that. I know. I think, I, I don't know. I think it's like, you know when you get into church and then it, when you're in your, your nose also gets itchy? But it's taking it right. out. <laughs> don't you? Don't you? When you, when you like... When you have to stand still, that's when you're... Okay, don't worry. Uh, it's obviously. fine. No, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> the next question, all right, I'm not going to do question one because it asks you to draw up a table where you compare the advantages and disadvantages, all right, of organisms A, B, and C. So, just in case, remember, what are you going to compare? You're going to compare A, hydrostatic skeleton, with an exo skeleton with an endoskeleton. All right. Now, question number 2.2 .2 is a little bit trickier. Compare muscle movement. All right. Look here. Compare muscle movement and muscle attachment in hydrostatic skeletons and exoskeletons. All right. Hydrostatic skeleton, exo. 
All right, over here, muscle attachment. Let's start with the easy one. Muscle attachment. Is there any, all right, muscle attachment in my hydra? No, because there's no hard part, all right, for in which the muscle to attach. Okay, exoskeleton, yes. All right, what is it attached to? The exoskeleton itself, the shell, whatever, all right? Muscle movement in hydrostatic skeleton, what did we say the muscle was? It was compartmentalized. All right. It was compartmentalized. So what does that mean? Very limited movement. When we look at um, most of your um, hydrostatic skeletons, we can't use the word sedentary as such, but they do, they're not very, as I said, they're not very motile. All right. They do tend to be far more lethargic, if I can use that word. Whereas my exoskeleton, all right, I have a much greater movement the reason being what do i have i actually have joints even though i do have this hard skeleton right you'll see i have these joints and these joints help with the muscle movement okay question three is also quite a bit of a challenge question why is it necessary for invertebrates to develop core complex support structures as they evolve and i think it was nicole and Nolo who asked about the gaseous exchange yes all right why in invertebrates what do we start to see all right the invertebrates if we have a look the animals all right they need to move now movement is brings about a whole new thing if the animal needs to move it needs a lot more energy trees are not very you don't see the tree doing a hip hop or whatever okay so it doesn't need a lot of energy. Plants. Animals, all right, they move more. Because of that, they need more energy. So here we've got, we've got more energy. Now, what does that mean? We need to eat. All right, so complex support structures. If we need to eat, we need to have a digestive system. What do we need? We need oxygen. So what else do we need? We need to have a respiratory system. All right? And also, very simple in some of the invertebrates, we need to get the oxygen around the body. They have very simple circulatory systems. All right? And you're also going to notice that they're going to have more reproductive and nervous systems. So what happens is, as an organism's need for energy increases, so do the other organ systems that help that, all right, they also need to become more complex. And if we look at invertebrates, our simple ones, our sponges, going all the way up to our insects, what do we see? We need to see more specialized organs. Okay, last question. Ah, why? Explain why the biggest living creature, which is the whale, all right, is able to exist despite its size. All right, what does it have? The whale, okay, is huge. It's huge. But what is it? It has an endoskeleton, all right, to support all the weight. But what does it, where does it also live? Uses its habitat is water. So what does it use? It uses the support of the water, the endoskeleton, and the support of the water, all right, in order for it to survive. Last question. I don't think you can see this. The diagram didn't come out too clearly, but it was the, that's why in the beginning, all right, I, I asked, explained the geological time scale. And all I want to note, it's, this is actually more confusing than, it actually looks more confusing than what the questions are. All I've done here is I've put this in and I've asked you to name one organism which has a hydrostatic skeleton which appeared in the Precambrian era. So if you have a look here, it's a data response. I've given you Precambrian, right? It's everything underneath here. And I've asked you for an organism which has a hydrostatic um, skeleton, snails and starfish and all of those. This is going to be a sponge, right? Almost like a sea anemone. 3.2, 3.3, 3.4, 3.5, 3.6, 3.7, 3.8, 3.9, 3.10, 3.11, 3.12, 3.13, 3.14, 3.15, 3.16, 3.17, 3.
Name two organisms which have an exoskeleton that appeared in the Precambrian. Exo means on the outside. I know you can't see too much. There we go. There's a starfish. All right, there again, the Precambrian, a brachiopod, a half, but a snail. Those are the ones that you should have. And if you look carefully over here, there we go, insects. All right, so it's basically, you don't really need to know anything about the geological. You just need to know different kinds of skeletons. Are we clear? Yeah. Because I don't, it's not in my, I think it's in my it's ear. All I have no idea. Yeah. It's done. Done. Clear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mine says before you go, a quick shout out to Nikaelo for getting 78% for her life sciences. And she says she's with Emza, Desiree, and Rifumelo. Shout out to you guys and congratulations for your good marks. Yeah, Keep it well up done. and we'll see you next time. Well same place, same time next week. <laughs> Goodbye from us.